This Lionel Alco body was marked for $3, but the seller told me to make an offer. So I said, how about two bucks? A deal was made, and now I own this shell that's missing its front apron and also has a break in the rear where the mounting screw should be. I wish that I had gotten one of these rotary tools years ago. It was a Christmas gift from my daughter, and it makes trimming this jagged edge so much easier. A little bit of sanding will make the lower edge even, smooth, and ready for a new repair part that I'll make in the kitchen, of all places. But before I do that, I want to clean and wet sand the rest of the shell. This removes the lettering and helps to blend away any nicks or other imperfections. The result will be a nice, smooth, clean surface ready for new paint. I'll trim a sheet of styrene plastic to a width of about three quarters of an inch. This is about what's needed for the new apron, but it's also a width that fits against the nose beneath the marker boards. Because you see, I'm going to use that space to create the curves after heating the plastic in our air fryer. After about a minute at 300 degrees, the strip begins to soften. While it's warm, I'll press it against the nose in order to match the shape. You have to work pretty quickly, and I can't get it all at once, but after a few trips through the air fryer, I have a pretty close match. The top of the new apron is sanded against a flat block of wood so that it will match the bottom of the shell. Plastruct plastic weld cement forms a very strong bond very quickly. It also flows well between the two pieces. This clamp isn't very tight, it's just to keep the trailing edges of the new apron from bowing outwards until the cement can set. I'm a little surprised because I think this is actually going to work. I first thought of using the air fryer when I was building the Disney castle, but it did a pretty good job here too. Yep, I can totally live with this. The basic shape is pretty good, and it's very well attached to the old shell. Now I just need to shape the apron's edges and maybe add some detail with thinner sheet plastic. <laughs>
I'm not trying to recreate the original apron. I'm just adding a few pieces to break up that big blank area. The rotary tool and a narrow nail sanding board made it possible to patch the broken area with more sheet plastic. Now that the opening is square, a patch piece is easy to cut. A little bit of modeling putty, some time for it to dry, and then a final sanding before priming the exposed or unpainted plastic. I have a complete running Alco that I can't bring myself to repaint, even though it's yellow and only costs $20. So I'll just leave the Union Pacific body alone for now and use the motorized base with the repaired shell. I can always swap the shells back later at some point down the road and I already have plenty of repainted shells that share frames so this is really no big deal. When this red and white Texas Special was new it probably had a single motor and frame just like this one. Or who knows, maybe it was a dummy unit. Either way, this motorized base is a nice fit. And next comes the hard part. Thinking how to paint and decorate this Alco. Just turning it back into the Texas Special would be easiest. And the white stripe at the bottom means I could save money by printing my own inkjet decals. But most of my trains are either Amtrak, Am Road, or Baltimore and Ohio. So Texas doesn't really fit geographically. I'll figure it out. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Bob's Workshop. Take care.